Hey everybody, welcome to TIW Podcast. I'm Eric, and today I watched The Mandalorian Chapter 8, Redemption. I blinked for a second there what the episode is called. Um, oh man, okay. If you haven't watched this yet, uh, do yourself a huge favor and just watch it right now. Don't read anything else about it. Don't look at memes from uh, Baby Yoda, any of that. Just go watch the episode right now. All right. So this is possibly my favorite 35 minutes of Star Wars uh, like that I've ever seen. Uh, whether it be movies, uh, other TV shows, Clone Wars, Rebels. I've, I've only watched a little bit of Rebels. But this, this episode like brings things together from the whole season so completely wonderfully that I was just I, I was just delighted the entire time I was watching it um it was kind of unfortunate that I watched it at work that I couldn't be like shouting and squealing as much as I um really want well I, I pretty much was because it was it was overnight uh everybody's up in their hotel room sleeping and all of that and I don't think I woke anybody up but anyway Oh, I, I watched it as soon as I realized that it was available, um, early, early Friday morning, um, probably like 2, 2 a.m. around there, and, oh, from the opening with the, uh, the two scout troopers who had, um, or whatever you call them, biker scouts, they had picked up the, um, picked up the baby Yoda, and it's just this whole scene of the them jabbering on and on talking, hey i want to i want to take a look at it you got to look at it like no i just scooped it up i didn't look at it that's, like, that's more of looking at it than i got and all this and then whenever he would move around he would punch baby yoda and <laughs> in the process making everybody watching very very mad but um anyway these two uh troopers were were, were played by adam pally um, who many may, might know from uh, the TV show Happy Endings or from the Mindy Project from later seasons of Mindy. Actually, he, he, st- he started surprisingly early on, but he wasn't a regular until like season three, I think. But anyway, um, Adam Pally, and then the other is Jason Sudeikis, who is uh, just hilarious. Um, i trying to think of other stuff he was on. I, was, I don't know if Adam Pally was ever on SNL. I don't think he was. But uh, Jason Sudeikis is on SNL. Um, that one movie with the no regrets <laughs> um, uh, tattoo. What movie? What is the name of that? Uh, We're the Millers. That's what it was. That movie is awesome. Go see, go see that movie in the theaters. If, if it's playing near you in a theater, definitely go see it. Um, it's probably on Netflix or something, but anyway, uh, those two are the, the, the guys and it, it, it reminded me a lot of like red versus blue or, uh, that original, uh, droids cart or not cartoon. It was a fan film. It wasn't droids. It was troop. What was it? What was it called? But it was a fan film of the, it was, but it was a comedy with the, the stormtroopers and all that, uh, had, um, remind me of that a little bit but also it really reminded me of no activity which is a fantastic show um originally a british show the first there was only one season in the uk i think um but i think i think that season is also on cbs all access or it might be on hulu now that i think of it but it's um the new U- U- u.s series of it is on CBS All Access. I highly recommend that. It is hilarious. I haven't watched season three yet. Actually, I don't. I don't think. I'm not sure if I've even completed season two. No, I did complete season two, but it didn't record. It didn't save that I had completed it. So when I went to watch it again. It like started back at like season two, episode seven or something. I was like, yeah, I'll keep watching it from here. So I, I still haven't gotten around to season three yet. But anyway, no activity. It's really, really funny. Um, I forget the the main guy who was from, he was in the original show and he's one of the creators of it. I'm pretty sure. Um, I forget his name, but he's uh, the main guy along with Tim Meadows, also from Saturday Night Live. 
Um, also be, spinning off of Jason Sudeikis. But anyway, go check out No Activity. And uh, that's all just from this opening scene of The Mandalorian. So it, IG-11 uh, arrives, the nurse droid, and uh, he, <laughs> he takes uh, Baby Yoda back, uh, straps him on, jumps, takes one of the speeder bikes, and, oh, he, he kills those guys, of course. But um, <laughs> jumps on the speeder bike and rolls right into town, kicking ass, just taking out a ton of guys, and then um, getting into the, the, the spot where everybody's holed up and they've got to figure out, okay, what's, what's next? We got to get out of here. We could go through the sewers into the tunnels where uh, Mandalorians have been, you know, they've been hiding underground and all that. And uh, he finds a grate. The Mandalorian finds a grate. And j- that's great. They can get out. <laughs> they can get out of there. But it's behind. It's welded shut. The grate itself ends behind some chairs. The chairs aren't a problem. They just move those chairs, like, in a second. It's the grate being welded shut that's a problem. So uh, they're trying to shoot at it. And uh, Gus Fring outside says, I can tell from how crazy you're being that... Uh, you're you're kind of desperate here, so uh, you know what? I'll give you until nightfall, and then we're gonna unload this giant Gatling gun on you and just just destroy you. Um, that's not acceptable. So they uh, they hatch a plan. They try to figure out how to get out of there, and um, oh, that's the moment that that's when IG Eleven comes rolling in. Takes out a whole bunch of them, gets in there, but then they send in a, uh, a flamethrower stormtrooper, and Baby Yoda you, does the magic way, does the magic hand thing, and turns the fire into fireball and sends it back at him, destroying him. And uh, IG Eleven, um, un- he he uh, uses a plasma cutter, plasma torch to um, to cut open the grate, and they get out into the sewers. Now they uh, try to find the Mandalorians to get their help, and they find instead a giant pile of armor. And it's a very sad thing, but then the armorer comes in and is like, hey, what's up? I'm just grabbing all this stuff. <laughs> Melt it down. Um, some of them got away, but, you know, kind of screwed. But uh, I'll, I'll still help you. And is, oh, is this the baby? Is this the baby Yoda? It's not, they don't call it that, but... Um, she knows a little bit about Yoda, that, uh, there's a race of sorcerers and all that, and this, uh, is probably one of them, and, uh, he calls, calls him, um, says that he's got to get him back to, uh, these sorcerers, they, they keep using that actual word, and, um, or else just raise him as his own, uh, but until he does either, either of those things, well, he would continue to do that forever, but um, the Mandalorian is his dad. But before they do that, um, <clears throat> Mandalorian is is uh, injured. Is the back of his head is is jacked, all jacked up, and he says, "Go on without me." But IG Eleven says, "I'll stay behind. Go take care of the child." It, not in that voice, but um, IG Eleven, being a nurse droid, he uh, convinces the Mandalorian to take off his helmet. What's his name? His his actual name is Jin something. I didn't write it down or anything like that. I don't have any notes or anything. I'm 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 trying to remember this two days later. I've only watched it the one time. It was really, really good. And I remember most of it. Just not in the exact order of everything that happens. But he convinces him, like, well, I'm not a living thing, so it's okay if you take off the helmet in front of me, whatever. It's like, okay, fine. <clears throat> Takes off the helmet, sprays him with back to st- back to juice. <laughs> back to spray and um says oh you'll be fine in a little bit so he helps them down into the the, the sewers they meet the 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 armorer there he said well you got to get away you gotta get over to well first before that while i'm telling you all this stuff i'm gonna uh, improvise a signet for you it's of the um the the muskox or whatever it was that <laughs> and he said you are a clan of two and you are its father until you can get it back to its people, or, you know, whatever. Or you, or you eat it, I guess, if you want to. Um, she doesn't say that. But, um, 
that's the choice. He he's he has to see it through, or he, he can't just leave it with somebody else or anything like that. So they go to this 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 lava river that's under in the sewers, which I I have to say that's that's a brilliant idea for a sewer. Like, I mean, I mean, it all the water would just like go. It would actually be pretty bad. That would be a pretty bad idea for a sewer, but. If you only threw trash down there, that's still pretty bad for a sewer, because all the fumes will come up out of there and whatnot. But if you have if 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 the lava river is there, already under your city, you may as well throw stuff into it if you need to get rid of it, like permanently. But anyway, uh, there's a ferryman, as an art, uh, <laughs> an astromech, <coughs> excuse me, uh, an astromech unit, and. It's uh like all all encrusted with with uh, hardened lava stone, um, but they they use a blaster to to break it free from the the side of the thing, and they all jump in, and then the R two unit or the whatever type of unit it is activates, and it has arms and legs, and it's very very disturbing, and it has a big old gondola style uh pusher thingy <laughs> there has to be an actual word for that i could easily look it up but for uh ferrymen and gondola gondoliers that you know that big old stick that they use to push along and the things and it has that and it gets them going and uh as they approach the op- the end of the tunnel um the mandalorian scans and sees that there's a ton of of stormtroopers waiting outside to just kill them or capture them or whatever when they uh, when they appear, and uh, so Kara Dune or not, what's her last name? Is it Dune? Kara, what whatever her name is, the awesome one. Um, they're all awesome, but she's she's so awesome. Um, she gets really upset. This was not such an awesome moment. She uh, the the droid does not listen to her to to stop, and she blasts its head off. It's like while you're in a flowing river, like the the droid is just like he's 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 really just steering so much. Like if you want him to stop, he would have to actively do something to stop the boat. But anyway, so that was a big mistake. And then uh, IG eleven, he says, "Well, well, he says he says, well, <laughs> the only option here." Is that I got to get get out there before you do, and self destruct. Not in those words, but that's the plan, and is very reminiscent of the end of Terminator Two, which was fantastic. And uh, he he goes out there because he's about to be captured. He his his programming requires him to do, to to explode, and his uh, new programming of protecting the child is overridden because the Mandalorian promises to protect him. And so there you have it. He blows up, all the troopers die, and they get out of there. But uh, Moff, what's Moff Gideon? That's his name. Um, <clears throat> but Gus Fring uh, has his TIE fighter, and he starts flying at him, attacking him, all of that. But along with that signet, um, the Mandalorian also received from the armorer a jetpack. And uh, she says, well, you can't use this until you're healed up. Or something along those lines. So by the time they get out of the the lava river, he's healed up enough uh, to at least give it a go. He uh, he jets up to the the TIE fighter, grabs onto it with uh, with like a harpoon. uh, What do you call it? uh, Not a Gatling gun. That was the thing earlier. Oh, by the way, he had a whole... The frig- another Terminator moment when he grabs the friggin' blaster Gatling gun off of the turret and is just mowing guys down with it. That was badass. Um, lots of callbacks to the first episode There's because there's that similar moment. He didn't rip the thing off of it, but he jumped and grabbed onto the... got onto the um, <clears throat> gunner station or whatever. But anyway... Uh, what's it called? It's a, um, it's a grappling hook. Similar, but very different from a cat Gatling gun. 
So, yeah, he gets onto the TIE fighter, and Gus is spinning around trying to knock him off of there. Um, you know, like a classic sort of, uh, like a car ch- Oh, my God. That was also a lot like a Terminator 2 thing with the T-1000 clawing onto the, onto the car, the truck, or whatever they were on. At that point, it was, yeah, it was a car because he's, like, into the hood on the back. With his claw hands, he's like, just, no, he got everybody's like swerving around trying to knock him. It was this whole episode was just Terminator 2. But anyway, um, <laughs> one of the best films ever. Um, so, uh, he, he finally gets some charges bla- placed on the TIE Fire and then just fl- let's go. Jetpacks down to the ground and lands safely, and uh, and Gus Fring lands not so safely. And so they they just kind of figure that he's dead. He's fine. Let's let's get going. Um, Mandalorian decides he's he's got to get out of here, um, even though uh, Carl Weathers says, "Hey, you can get back in the guild. It's gonna be great." And uh, Cara Dune says, "If that's her name, I care. That has to be. I'm pretty sure that's her name." Um, says, "Well, I'm gonna stay here, but I'm not gonna be a bounty hunter. But I'm, I'm gonna stay here. It seems cool." I like the lava stuff. And uh, so <clears throat> Mandalorian and the child get on their way. And um, then we see the crashed, um, the crashed TIE fire and like the welding, the look of, 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 of energy cutting through, <laughs> through the side of the TIE fighter and out pokes a very strange looking, it's not it's not a lightsaber. I had never seen this. I haven't watched like all of Rebels and Clone Wars and all that whenever this stuff was introduced. I'm like, what the heck is that? It's like a is, is that's that's like a lightsaber. It's not a lightsaber. It turns out so I was really excited about this, not even knowing like all the history of this thing. It is is a one and only the only thing what there's only one of them. Um, from what the research that I did, the very brief research that I did, there's only one of them. So this has to be that one dark saber. And, uh, we, we end the episode with Moff Gideon standing on top of his crash tie fighter, holding that dark saber with his cape flowing in the wind. And I was so excited for season two. It's coming out in fall 2020. I, 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 it's, I, I wish it was fall 2020 already, so I just watched that. I don't care about anything else that's coming out between now and then. But, um, oh my gosh, it was great. It was so great. Um, I'm really excited to see what happens uh, in Season 2. Um, all the guys that are locked up into that ship, they've got to be coming back in Season 2. And then who is presumably Boba Fett coming upon that bounty um, over on Tatooine. That's got to play into season two as well, and he he's he's not gonna stop. He's still got to go get that child away from the Mandalorian for whatever uh, Gus Fring's mission is. He's got I, you know what? I think the child has those chemistry skills. He uses his magic hands to make the purest methamphetamine, methamphet methamphetamine in all of the Outer Rim. That's what it is. Um, <clears throat> but we'll see what happens with all... Oh, I totally forgot. Carl Weathers is like, hey, baby, do the magic hand thing when the TIE fighter was coming at him and he just, he just waves at him. <laughs> that was so good. It's so, so good. Um... So yeah, that is, that's pretty much, yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to talk about with this episode. Um, I, I briefly forgot about how excited I was for the Mandalorian. I thought that I was just going to be so excited for Mandalorian that I forget that I just wouldn't care about Rise of Skywalker. Um, but I did really, really like Rise of Skywalker. I, I'm not going to do an episode about it or anything. Not a spoiler episode, none of that. I just want to say that I I loved it. I thought it came it it brought the nine films to a, a 
a, a pretty great conclusion as like uh about as uh, yeah i th- like yeah sure there's all kinds of stuff that it could have been but it is what it is i thought was pretty great and i liked it and i'm looking forward to see what else there will be in the star wars universe if the mandalorian is just a glimpse into what we're gonna get as far as the obi-wan show that's what it's called the obi-wan show um uh we like as far as that series mandalorian season two any of the other stuff there's another season of rebels i've got to go back and watch the other ones it makes me really want to watch those i saw an article i didn't read it because i didn't want spoilers for rebels but um it said oh the, the secret trilogy that uh the movies solo <clears throat> uh rogue one not, yeah solo rogue one and rebels is like a whole other trilogy of great stories and um it it sounded like rebels especially added into that supplements the whole um universe a lot the whole star wars universe so anyway i yeah i really like that that film and, and uh in the time between now and uh season two i gotta check out uh that rebels show and i got clone wars i've heard is really good too but all that stuff takes place um you know before a new hope whereas rebels is all like during uh, it's like all over the place during the the empire fighting the empire i think but anyway yeah it's um that that was an awesome awesome season awesome season finale and uh i i i had this feeling at the time watching the 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 episodes that were seemingly unrelated that you know even if they didn't that there's stuff that didn't pay off yet in this season but it's definitely setting up stuff for later on down the road and i think as more and more of this show or if it's only just going to be two seasons total, it, it, that'll probably be fine, great and fine too. But as more episode, we get more episodes, stuff will tie in together even more, I'm sure, and I'm excited for all of that. So, all right, I think that's a, a pretty hefty episode for this um, installment of The Mandalorian. Let me know what you thought about this episode by tweeting me at TIW Podcast. Go to TIWpodcast.com for more reviews. If you enjoyed this episode or anything else on the site, please share some links with your friends. Subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, wherever you like to listen. Stay safe out there in all the infinite multiverses, and I'll see you next time here on TIW Podcast. Bye!